Puranas and Itihasas, but it's this particular event. I brought it up because it's part of the whole scene of a king inviting anybody, imagine if today anybody could come see the president in, in anywhere in the whole country and say, I've got a problem. The king's got to resolve it. Because it's not ruled by virtue, it's ruled by something else. That was a good question. Anyone else? Comments or question? Yes? Maharaj, uh, was authenticated the treatise of Varna? I beg your pardon? Like, uh, like uh, this, uh, you said, right? This Shudra was performing austerity and he was not supposed to do in that age. So, was austerity entitled to some Varna or some Ashram? Well, it, it, was, it was specifically, it's a severe austerity for the purpose of getting something material. Look, look at the austerity. Very severe. Not just like, you know, fasting out of codice. <laughs> Very severe. And for the purpose of immortality. Entrance into heaven when I, I'm, I'm not qualified. So, that kind of. Now, does that answer your question? Okay. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, a follow up on that. When Hiranyakashipu did very, very austere severity, he got the boon from Lord Brahma. Yes, even, he did. even though it was the intent was known that the intent is not good. Yeah. Yes he did. Didn't he? So I don't have to, I don't know how to answer that. It's not it's a different yoga for one thing. It's a different yoga for one thing. And his position was not that of a sudra. His position was that of a chatriya. So he was authorized in that particular yuga to do severe austerities. His purpose was bad. And it's not, it's not not only him, there's many persons that did, Prikasura, that did austerities for Ill, Ill purpose. So one could go through what yuga, what was the circumstance, and you know, parse things in that manner, but it's, it's not a universal thing probably shouldn't have brought this up because it's leading to all kinds of complicated questions. <laughs> you know, specific to Ramayana, you had something. Here comes the microphone. Um, so like, Madhu was, Rama came before Krishna came, right? Yes, correct. So then like, if Madhu is not immortal, how is he able to stay alive until Krishna's yuga? and then get killed by Krishna. Well, it's, it's not Krishna killed him. Oh. Love of Shatruvna killed him. Oh. But, here's a but. But, it's possible for some living entities to live long lives. We heard about one of those two classes ago. One of those was associates of Ramachandra who lived way, 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 way over until Krishna's pastimes. Dvidvida. You know from Krishna book, Dvidvida was disrupting everything and Balaram clobbered him. Yeah. Balaram finished Dvidvida. But Dvidvida lived during Ramachandra's time. So he was a Chiranjiva. Chiran means he lived a long time. So some living entities live a long time, spanning long periods of time. There's exceptions and there's rules. Okay. You got what I just said? Should I say it again? I got it, but then like, um, if Krishna did not kill like Madhu, then how did he get the name Madhusudana? Oh, he, the Kaitaba and Madhu during the early, 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 early stages of creation, early stages of creation, Madhu, different Madhu, and Kaitaba, they were demons, and they tried to steal the Vedas from Brahma. So Brahma called for help. Vishnu, Vishnu came, let him have it. 
It was a different Madhu. Okay. Uh, now I get your question. Hmm. Madhu Sodhana. Like, yes. Thank you. Um, my question is, uh, uh, Shatrugna, he is uh, wish 